everyone and this is a uh, Merry Christmas from uh, Mark and I and uh, all my team to you. Uh, just a quick reminder of what Christmas means to our animals. I was getting ready to go out this morning and Russell reminded me uh, about the animals and Christmas and what it means to them and normally most of them gear up for this time of year and know Righto, we're going to have a whole pile of kids or a whole pile of adults. So generally, most, generally, most of them love that. But then you have to be reminded, well, don't have to be, but I need to remind you to take into consideration when you do have the animals that are nervous. And uh, most cats are pretty tolerant, but if they're anything like mine, they're not really in favor of having people. Russell said to me this morning, which is my ginger cat, he said, is the people coming this year, mum? I said, yes, there probably is. Ah, okay. Well, I actually have my son's two dogs for a couple of weeks because they love to stay at Nanny's while my son is away on um, his uh, Christmas break. Please be reminded to keep food, especially chocolates, uh, away from the animals uh, and children. Uh, last year, I know of a Great Dane that passed away. He ate uh, a, a, some chocolate that was left on the ground by a child and he passed away in agony within about 12 hours of him ingesting the chocolate. Now this, uh, it's very hot where I am, apologies for that. So again this year I'll be taking my son's dogs and that was one thing that Russell was going to ask about. and. Uh, we had a little bit of a moment, Russell and I, this morning. He's like, hell no! Because last year there was an elder dog, um, Zigbee, and uh, he's about seven or eight. This year we have a seven-month-old Blue Heeler puppy. So that's going to be pretty interesting for Russell. Sage will be fine because she just normally stays in the bedroom. Um, but uh, I've got the two dogs this Christmas. Now, what I was mentioning before is always put your animals first. And I don't mean this to be in a, a nasty way, but this is their home and, uh, and, and they want, the, generally most of them that come through at Christmas time, because people like to have a connection with me, 15 minute connection, Christmas, people are coming, letting you know, etc., etc. And how are you going to deal with it? Especially if it's a new animal that's come into the family. Most of the dogs love it, but if you have an, an anxious and, an, and a very anxiety dog with anxiety or even an anxious cat, please put them away in a quiet place. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that you don't have the common sense to not to do that. Um, some people, if they're having people coming, they actually send their pets to a friend's place or they send them to a, a cattery or a, a, a kennel or something like that. So please be aware of the the um, the heat around the house the noise the food the people please take into consideration uh, especially the noises um, some dogs are most animals are pretty much okay with this but of all of those that i have just mentioned uh, about the the festivals festive celebrations um, the next thing is is going away and uh, that's a very hard one because sometimes we have to go away for Christmas or for the day. Please make sure that your animal has plenty of water and put spare ones out. Last year, a, a, a dog had actually knocked its bowl over and it had no water all day. Um, and it was outside in the yard and it was hot and there was no water around. So please make sure, to, do the ice thing. Put the water, put, put the ice blocks in there and let it cool down and uh, the water stays cool and, and the ice melts. Put about four or five of them around the yard because not just for your animals, but for the, the uh, animals that are, are in your yard, you know, the birds and the lizards and things like that. They find it very hot too. Um, last year, I had a communication with a bird that had um, passed away from heat stroke. So please remember to make sure your animals have plenty of water and cool water. Put as many bowls around the yard and inside as you can. And always make sure if you're leaving them inside, it's, it's hot and uh, putting the air con on. They love the fact that most times around Christmas, most people are on holidays. The children are on holidays. The, the mummy and daddy are on holidays and everybody is there. But sometimes they just need their own space. 
I know that Russell personally, and especially Sage, my two cats, uh, Sage, she'll come out when she wants to come out and be with me and then she'll go back into my bedroom and, and stay there. And But she comes in and out when she wants to. I never, never t make her do anything that she doesn't want to do. But just remember that they do need their own space and, and have a look at their personalities and see if their their personalities are the type that can certainly take a lot of people because sometimes the, I know two dogs um, that uh, a relative of mine has two dogs and and uh, they're large dogs and uh, they love Christmas time. They love the jumping in the pool with the family and, and having a sausage and just, which I should probably eat anyway, but they love having it. They love having children and a family, but then other dogs or cats just go and hide in the corner. So please remember Christmas time is all about them as well. Now, if you're having to go away, uh, they also understand that. And uh, I, I know that it's very hard for them especially with ones that have separation anxiety and I know people that have not got away for for seven eight ten twelve years because they know that their animals uh, become very frightened and because of the separation anxieties that's a hard one to deal with okay unless you take the dog with you which is the next thing that I'm talking about taking the dog away with you most of them know that you're going away and, and try and make it so comfortable for them. Have we got another lizard? We've got thousands of them here. Uh, we are at Tree Frog Hollow. Green Bullfrog. Green Bullfrog. No, it's not. It's Frog Hollow. Frog Hollow. Terry, what's the name of this place? And my brother's sitting over in the corner there. Frog Hollow. There you go. Uh, in the beautiful uh, Logan Village in Brisbane, and, and this place is just absolutely magnificent. I'm, I'm sitting here at this pond next to this fella here. Um, I just like to promote Frog Hollow. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying before, um, uh, having to leave your animals, uh, some of them absolutely love going to the kennels, like, oh, we had so much fun, I got this, made the, all these new friends, and we had an absolute ball. Others do not appreciate the uh, fact that you are away and uh, become very dirty at you. Uh, I know one in actual fact that uh, he, the day before they left, he peed all over their suitcases, peed all over the carpet, he peed on their bed and he peed even in her handbag. So true story, this cat went around and just overnight peed the day before he was supposed to go to a kennel, he peed over everything. So they know. Russell, when I go away, usually drops a Nanky toy into my suitcase. True story, he, I had this Nanky half-eaten fish toy. He put it into my suitcase. He thought that was hilarious. I thought it was really cute when I got there. I'm like, what the hell is it? Ah, oh, Russell. Oh, he steals the shoe. <laughs> Russell. Romy, Romy stole a shoe from me one day. I was going away. I went to go on stage and I found one shoe. I rang my flatmate and I said, do you know if there's another one? And she picked up this nanky, chewed up shoe and she goes, is this the one you're looking for? <laughs> Robbie had stolen a shoe out of my bag because he knew I was going away. Uh, he chewed it up and put it right in the corner of my uh, walk-in robe. Uh, so my flatmate at the time, lady that was staying with me, she found it. So they do, they will attack have no doubt about that. They hide everything because they will come in and they will trash everything. Suitcases, handbags, shoes, even cameras, watches, phones. You leave it lying around, it is fair game. So Mark's in the background laughing there. So that's what happens when you have to leave them. Generally, if you have to leave them at home, in their own home, I would suggest this if they're having separation anxieties. If you can leave them at home, this is where they're most happiest. But if you know that they really do enjoy being at the kennels or something, take them there. The next thing is taking them with you. Oh, car ride, woohoo! Romy, as soon as he knew that uh, I picked up his beach bag, he went berserk, he would jump straight into the back of the car, even if I was ready or not. He would sit there and just wait, he'd sit there. I might take another half an hour, I'd come down there and he's, we going yet? We going yet? We going yet? 
I saw you pick up my bag. I know we're going to the beach. You're not getting out of this one. One day, um, I had to had to not go. I couldn't get to the beach, and I picked up his bag, and and then I had a phone call, and I had to take this phone call. I tried to get him out of the back seat of my car because um, he was already in it, and he growled at me. And Romy is uh, was a 60 kilo mastiff bull Arab. He growled at me. He gave me this, and I just went, "No, mate, that's not happening." You have to get out. And I had, I'm, I'm 60 kilo ring and wet. He's the same weight as me. So you can imagine me trying to get him out of the back of the car. I was not gonna let him win. Okay, so the same rules apply over the Christmas holidays. When you have to take them for a car ride, remember that they need water. They need a pee stop. They need to sniff the ground and see who's been there last. And they need to know uh, and, and a lot of times they'll be quite protective of uh, what we're doing over the Christmas holidays, who's there and, and where they're going to. So um, generally they know, it's like, okay, we're going to Auntie Sam's place. Oh, that's really cool. She's got a pool and two other dogs. Remember that if there are other animals there, you have to introduce them, of course. Okay, just try and use an understanding of your pets when uh, when you have to go away or you're staying at home or Christmas Day and, and all of those things. Now, I feel I'm not telling you something that you don't already know, but please remember from their perspective that Christmas is an entirely different time of the year for them. It takes them out of their comfort zone. There's people coming, people going, they're going places. You know, just everything is so changing. And, and for some of them, most of them, it's a great thing. They love it. They look forward to it every year, but some of them do not. Even if you have a family friend, it can be a house sitting. Yeah, um, the house sitting is a, a wonderful thing but you need to introduce them to that house sitter first. Don't just go lopping that house sitter up and they're like, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? Again, this happened uh, some time ago and not to one person, but to several people, different people. This person locked up on the doorstep and uh, house sat for a week. The first two days, these little uh, Pomeranians, they just run a mark and they peed all over the place and peed all over her bed and peed all over the floor. And they just did, they, they're like, well, in retaliation, where are my mummy and daddy? Let them see what's going on. Let them see the festivities. Let them see you packing the bags. Let them see, and if they're coming with you, pack a bag for them so they can see that their bag is being packed as well. Remember the treats. Please don't let Auntie Georgia feed the little dog ice cream not a good thing or the kids feed cheese and so forth this is when most of the time animals end up in at the vets or they've gotten out and they've been frightened of something and they've run away and been hit by a car these are the tragedies but reality so i'm not trying to stir up trouble here and 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 try and make you feel bad i hope that you have a fantastic christmas yep i'm getting to that I hadn't forgotten. I hope that you all have a, a fantastic Christmas and give your animals big hugs and give them lots of presents and bones and uh, remember what you do feed them. No cooked chicken, anything like that. Um, they even be careful with the sticks. I know it's a lot to ask, but it's keeping them safe. I just want to remind you of my uh, book, The Animal Whispers, in their own words. You can uh, purchase it on my website of uh, which one is it, Mark? It's theanimalwhispers.com. Um, it is printed in Australia. Uh, everything is done in Australia. I did not take it offshore. It cost me a considerable amount more, but I wanted to leave it in Australia. This is a great book. It has so many subjects. And even if I do say so myself, everyone that has read it has just gone, wow, because it's in their own words. It is all animals, all the animals. And what happens when our animals pass? And what happens if we inherit animals? And what happens if we get a new animal and our old animal is still there or has passed over? It also talks about lions and tigers and giraffes and, and gorillas and all of those things. I hope that you have a fantastic Christmas. This thing's making me itch, so I'm going to take it off.
<laughs> oh, dearie me. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Give your animals a big hug for me and uh, we will um, certainly keep rolling this, uh, this TV show. We've had a lot of huge responses to it, but please remember about Christmas time and please give your animals big hugs. Remember that they know what is going on. They are well aware of what is happening and they're sneaky at this time of year. They will steal little Johnny's toy and chew it up in the corner. Trust me. And then have to go to the hospital because they've ingested uh, some plastics. They're quick. Have a beautiful Christmas, everyone. And bye-bye uh, from Mark and I. Thanks for watching. Bye.